Hello, happy Tag Tuesday. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have the mid-year book free coat tag. <laughs> So fun fact, this is actually the first video that I ever made on my channel almost exactly one year ago. So if you want to go check that out then you can feel free, it's still there, but I just I, I wouldn't recommend it. This tag was created by Chami from Is That Chami who was previously raised like wildfire. I will link her original video down below. But aside from that we're just going to get into it. So number one is the best book you've read so far in 2018 and for me that is without a doubt Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. As you all know I absolutely love this. I just think it's so intricate, the writing is beautiful, the plot is so twisty and turny, there's such like an epic mix of genres in here and I just thought it was amazing like I, I don't know what video it was I think it was predicting my best books of 2018 I like proper freaked out about it but I absolutely adore this book and I just need to devour everything else by Lainey Taylor now. Number two is the best sequel you've read so far in 2018 and for that I have Warstorm by Victoria Aveyard. I thought this was just such an epic conclusion to the series. I've actually been reading this series since it was first released. I think the first book was released in 2015 and I fell in love with it then. The series has come so far from then. Victoria Aveyard's writing has improved so much and this book is just full of like epic battle scenes so much political intrigue like the beginning of the series was and it was just such like a heart racing conclusion to the series the ending made me cry wasn't what i wanted i'm kind of sad about it but i believe that victoria aviard is actually going to be writing some novellas in this world and then hopefully I'll get the ending that I wanted because this this crushed my soul. Number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to and for this I've picked the most recent new release that I have which is Fioriborn by Claire Legrand. This was only released in June in the UK so I have actually only just received it but this is about two people. One is a queen and one like from many years ago and one is just a person in whatever world this is set in and they are tied together despite being separated by centuries. So I'm intrigued to see sort of how that plays out. Don't really know much about it, but it was getting a lot of hype when it was released as an arc in one of the subscription boxes. So I think it's gonna be really good. And as I've just received it, I'm like super hyped to read it. Number four is your most anticipated release for the second half of 2018. And for me, that is definitely Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, because like I said, I'm obsessed with Strange the Dreamer right now to the point where I only read Strange the Dreamer in March and I'm going to reread it in September, ready for Muse of Nightmares to come out in October. I am that hyped for it. I read the first chapter in my paperback edition of Strange the Dreamer and it completely like opens up the world. It shows different characters from different like society's perspectives and I'm just like so hyped to see where the series is gonna go because after reading Strange the Dreamer, I know that anything can happen if Lainey Taylor is writing a book. Number five is your biggest disappointment of the year so far. And for me, that would be A Court of Frost and Star by Sarah J Mars. I've definitely read worse books this year. I gave this four stars but overall it was very disappointing. It was poorly written compared to her other books. There was no plot. It didn't really do anything for the story or the world. It was just sort of, it read like fan fiction and I've come to expect more from her like so so much more. Going in I knew it wasn't going to be much but I expected it to at least be a lot better written than it was. Number six is your biggest surprise of the year so far and that would be November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I really enjoyed this. I understand how problematic it is and it's really not good. It's not a healthy portrayal of a relationship and I understand all the problems but I still loved it. Like I really really loved it. This follows a girl who was in a fire and she's an actress and she lived in LA and it sort of scars all of her body. She was at her father's house at the time and he forgot that she was staying there so she kind of holds it against him and then she meets this guy and he gives her a lot of confidence and it is ultimately a romance however it's very problematic but I just I loved it. I expected to hate it and I loved it. This really surprised me. Number seven is your favourite new author who is either a debut or new to you. For that one you could pick either of these two for me. So of course you've got Lainey Taylor. I'm so excited to read Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Once I've wrapped up some series I think I'm going to dive in there because I need to read more by her. Or Colleen Hoover because what I need in my life right now is some angsty overly dramatic romances and I've requested her first ever book slammed from my library and I'm kind of just excited to dive into more of her books for that like angsty new adult romance stuff that I'm like really craving right now. Number eight is your newest fictional crush and for this we have Marco from Saga. I have read the entire published Saga volume so far and oh my god I just love Marco so much. 
He's not really great on the cover of this one. The art has improved loads since the first ones. It's a lot more detailed and polished. But oh my God, he's dreamy and he's so respectful and he's broody and he's just everything I want in a love interest. And I get pictures of him, which just makes me happy. Pictures of him, which just makes me happy. Then we have Nine, your newest favorite character. And call me repetitive, but we're going with Laszlo Strange because he's just like, he's a scholar. He's really sensitive. And he's just, he's just so sweet. And I just love him. He's just so, I don't know. And his character just goes on a massive arc in this book. And I'm really excited to see where he goes next. Cause now he's just like, don't want to spoil it, but he's just different. And I need to know what happens from here. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. And this actually made me cry from happiness. And it is Saga volume six. I can't tell you why, but towards the end, there's like a really happy moment. And it just, it really got me. And I cried, I actually cried as well. I didn't just feel sad, I physically cried and I never ever cry in books. Number 11 is a book that made you happy and you have no idea how hard it was for me to find one because I don't read books to make me happy. I just, I don't know why I read books, but it, the purpose isn't generally to make me happy. I did read Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging this year. I have read most of this series before apart from the last book and I'm rereading it so that I can read that final book and find out what happens. This was my favourite series from childhood and I found it hilarious. I still find it hilarious now. It was written in 1999 so it is a little bit problematic but I still thought it was funny and it gave me all those good feels it gave me when I was like 13. Number 12 is your favourite book to film adaptation you've watched so far this year and I don't actually watch either a lot of films or well yeah I don't watch a lot of films so I couldn't really think of any but I did really enjoy season two of Riverdale which I finished this year which is a tv Netflix adaptation of the Archie comics and I loved it so much it's got so much like drama and angst which as you may have guessed is something I love in all media so yeah Riverdale was really good um also I enjoy 13 Reasons Why as a tv show I understand it's problematic but like drama angst you get where I'm going with this. So I did kind of enjoy that one as well, but Riverdale definitely a lot more. Number 13 is what is your favorite video you've done so far this year? And I don't really have a specific one, but I'm really happy with my bullet journal setup and flip through that I did because it was a new style and you guys all seem to enjoy it. So I am going to try and add more bullet journal videos throughout my channel. And also I've done a few vlogs. I've done vlogs for readathons. I've started doing book diaries because I want to get into the habit of vlogging and be able to do it and edit it well. And I'm happy with some of how some of those have turned out. I feel like vlogs could always be better because you could always edit more when you're doing a vlog and make it fancier and fancier and fancier. But on this learning curve that I'm going through of vlogging, I'm happy with how I've progressed so far and how my content has improved. Number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought or received so far this year. And I have received so many and bought so many that I could not just pick one. So I have three. The first one is again, Strange the Dreamer because I had the paperback copy of this because like I said, I wasn't that bothered about reading it. And then I read it and I loved it. And my boyfriend hunted down the UK hardback. It isn't the blue sprayed edges one, but it is the UK hardback. Then we have a book that I received for my birthday that I wanted, essentially it was a cover by. And that is The Beast Player by Nohoku Yuihashi. I butchered that, I know. But I absolutely adore this cover. It was a complete cover by. The only other thing that drew me into it is that it is a Japanese translation. And I do actually really like those. Like I love Haruki Murakami. So I'm excited to see what a Japanese translated YA fantasy reads like. And that cover is just gorgeous. And then one that I bought for myself early on in the year is The Last Namsara by Kristen Cicerelli. Because look at that. I love foil and I love this cover and it's just beautiful. I don't think it's very pretty underneath. No, but that does jack it. It's good. And then the last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And of course my answer to that is all of them. I'm dreading doing my entire own TBR video this year because I've been hauling so much. I've been spending so much money on books. It's insane. I have been reading probably twice as much as I have any other year, but I'm still hauling like crazy. But for specific reasons, the books that I want to read this year, Game of Thrones, I want to make a start on this series because I would like to have read it by the time the last season of the TV show is aired, which will be next summer. And they're pretty chunky, so I do know it's gonna take me a while, so I'd like to at least make a start on this. And then one of my 2018 reading goals was to reread Harry Potter because I've only ever read it the first time around when they were being released. So I'd like to reread all of the Harry Potter series. I now have the first three illustrated ones and I'm also collecting the house editions in my house colours Slytherin. 
And lastly, this is probably the most achievable one, and that is to continue my reread of the Throne of Glass series. I'm currently just started on Air of Fire, but I am hosting a read along so that we can read them all together, ready for the release of Kingdom of Ash in October. But the further you go along, the chunky they get and it's harder to fit them in my monthly TBR but I would like to stay on track with this read along and see how the series concludes and possibly break my heart in the process. But that is everything for the Midia Book Freakout tag. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below what your favourite book or series you've read because of booktube is and also please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head into my description box you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter as well as a link to my Bookish Body Butter and Candle website. The Instagram for that and also a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today. Bye!